Hi there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK, around the world and today I wanted to um, disclose some information I was shared yesterday. It's about the five Jamaicans that we know of who were murdered after being deported from the UK. Now of course people are really fearing for their lives when they are deported because, you know, sometimes you're forced into a situation in the country that you were born, in this case Jamaica. and you know, if you're coming from the ghetto or whatever, you could have been involved in some kind of badness, as they say. But you come over to the UK to start a new life, to start over, and everybody deserves a second chance. What may be happening, though, is that their past is catching up on them. I don't know, but um, I've got the names of the people who were murdered. Um, the Guardian apparently went out there um, they did some archive research and they've done this on their own back which is quite amazing because the UK government they have no responsibility for people once they're deported they don't want to know and yet I can understand that in a sense because they're deporting what they call um, foreign offenders so therefore According to the statutes, once you've committed a crime and you're deported, that's it. We don't have nothing to, we wash our hands of you. Um, I don't know if it takes into, it doesn't take into account those who have been wrongfully deported. It doesn't take into account those who have been convicted, um, who have been wrongfully convicted and who may have been deported. And there's only five that the Guardian know of, but there could be more. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read out the names of the men that it's been released who have died. Um, okay. It, the, the majority of murders the Guardian has identified involving people deported from the UK to Jamaica have occurred in the past three or four months. The victims definitively established are Owen Clark, 62, who was shot and killed by armed men on the 23rd of February. Clark, known as Father Fowl and Roy Fowl, was a music promoter and had been convicted of dealing drugs. According to Jamaican media, he was a leader of the British Link Up Crew, a dance hall events business in the UK and Jamaica which was allegedly a front for drug smuggling. Now, what can I say? You know, they make it sound so fantastic. I, I But I, I can't comment. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. Um, Dwayne Robinson, 37, known as Little Wicked, was murdered on the 4th of March, it says 2018. I don't know if that's meant to be 2019, because prior to that they said... These are in the last two to three months, so that might be a little typo. Alfonso Harriet, 56, known as Wani British or Oni British, and reportedly part of the same crew as Clark, was murdered on the 29th of March. Paul Mitchell, 50, was fatally stabbed on the 31st of December in the grocery store at which he worked. Hugh Bennett, 48, a shopkeeper, was stabbed to death on the 31st of December. May they rest in peace. Um, last year, apparently, there was 1,287 murders in Jamaica. Um, according to the Home Office guidance about Jamaica published in March last year, the Jamaica Constabulary Force is underpaid, poorly trained, understaffed and lacking resources. Organised criminal elements are prevalent and extremely active, the guidance states. And the police only make arrests in 45% of the cases with a homicide conviction rate of 7%. 80% of murders involve firearms. So if that means the majority, 50%, over 50% get away with the crime. That's basically what this is saying, which is very, very sad that, you know, people are committing crimes and getting away with it. Um, one guy who got away, he said that they actually target um the plane they wait till those people um come off like in the february in the case of the february flight and then they look out for those on there i think what's hap what's happened is is that you know those who may have done some kind of have some unfinished business and who escaped in quotes to the uk have now been forced to face um their past and this is the result 
which is quite sad because a lot of people have turned their lives around and now they're having to face that kind of life that they were trying to escape. Um, uh, the Guardian today, the headlines, the analysis, the debate sent direct to you. It says, um, Grace Bradley, the policy and campaigns manager at the human rights organisation Liberty, said by putting deportees in danger, the government was adding an additional punishment to that imposed by the courts. She continues, it's incredibly disturbing that the government continues to pursue deportations at the expense of its human rights obligations, which stipulate that people must not be deported to situations where they face threats to their life, torture or ill treatment. These worrying incidents further highlight why the practice of deportation post-conviction is a discriminatory form of double punishment that should be scrapped. So basically, they're saying that these people have already done the time, whether it's four years, six years, eight years. That is the punishment. That is the punishment for the crime. But on top of that, they're being doubly punished by being deported and being deported to a country where their lives are in danger. So that is some serious stuff. Um, apparently, I'm just going to read um, one deportee said he was ambushed in a shop days after arriving in Jamaica by a group of armed men he knew from when he had previously lived there. I believe I was targeted, he said. I had an altercation with one of those men when I was in Jamaica in 2012. A group of men ran into the shop and I was in that I was in, and they had high-powered rifles. A lot of shots were fired and another man died. I escaped into some bushes behind the shop and I was lucky to survive. I think that people who were on that February charter flight had been targeted. Everyone knew that that charter flight was coming and the people keep a lookout. How did they know it was coming? Oh, I guess there was some media coverage about it because they tried to stop it, didn't they? So that's probably why they knew it was coming. I think that people deported from the UK are particular targets once they reach Jamaica. That's what a deportee said. Um, like I said, see, he had an altercation in 2012, so now he's gone back. These same people he had an altercation with are coming back for him. And that's probably what's happening. Those people who got away and who started a new life here are being forced to face the music on their return. And it's not, an, it's not a nice tune that's being played. Um, a spokeswoman for the end of the end deportations campaign group said, it's sickening, but sadly not surprising that people who the Home Office have deported have been killed. These deportations must be stopped immediately before more lives are lost. A Home Office spokesman said, we only return those with no legal right to remain in the UK, including foreign national offenders. Individuals are only returned to their country of origin when the Home Office and court deem it safe to do so. Should the Home Office receive any specific allegations that a returnee has experienced ill treatment on return to their country of origin, these would be investigated in partnership with the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. Thing is, is that if there, if it's a statute that says, you know, you've committed a crime, you're going to be deported, then that is how it's been. But I don't understand why they do both. Why don't they just deport them if that is the case? Why don't they deport them from the get-go? Why make them do four to six years and then deport them on top of it? It's not right. Just deport them and, and done with it. Because the amount of money it's costing you to keep them in the, in the prison anyway, that's really, really not good. Um, I think, okay, yeah, um, what it says is the killings took place after the men went were sent back to Jamaica, which is one of the highest per capita murder rates in the world, despite strict rules prohibiting prohibiting deportation to countries in which an individual's life may be in danger. The government does not routine and routinely monitor what happens to people who have been deported. And like I said, it was only through the Guardian they verified the deaths and um, other returnees fear for their lives. 
They say some some of the men had convictions for violent and drug related offences. But Naga Candia, a public law solicitor, MTC and Co, which deals with many Jamaican deportation cases, said the government's human rights obligations were not dependent on past behaviour. So, like I said, um, it shouldn't the way that the government is treating these um, deportees should not be dependent on their behaviour. And um, yeah. <laughs> It does look as though they, like, you know, it does look from that. I mean, we don't know what's true from what's not true. Um, we only have their hearsay. But it does look like there was a lot of drug dealing going on. And, um, yeah, the only thing is that we don't know. We don't know the full extent of how many people have been killed or who have been murdered. And I'm sure that, you know, those who are... Um, lined up for, for deportation must be extremely worried, especially if there is unfinished business back home, as we call it, or as they call it. Anyway, I hope you found that useful. Not good news, but um, it is good to be kept in the loop. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.